So in this lecture now, we're going to talk about a specific way that we uh, discuss the relative retention indices um, of compounds that are separating out in a gas chromatography experiment. So COVAT's retention, retention index is specific for GC, and uh, it's known as this variable I here, um, where I measures how strongly retained um, a hydrocarbon or some organic compound is uh, during a separation. So I is going to be equal to 100 times N, where N is the number of carbons in a straight chain hydrocarbon known as an alkane. Alkane hydrocarbons, these have two functional groups, or I should say two types of bonds only. They are restricted to having sigma carbon carbon bonds and sigma carbon hydrogen bonds. And they'll take on some form where you have methyl groups at the terminus and then n number of methylenes or CH2s and then another methyl group at the other terminus. So if you increase the number of carbons, then we increase the retention index or that compound is more strongly retained as a function of it having a higher boiling point. Recall that we said boiling point is the most important uh, factor for determining retention time um, in gas chromatography. So hydrocarbons that are saturated or have the maximum number of hydrogens they're saturated with hydrogen atoms, have this formula where there's n number of carbons, there's twice that plus two number of hydrogens, two n plus two. So um, if you haven't had organic chemistry yet, I'm gonna give you uh, some common prefixes that tell you how many carbons are in the longest continuous chain, um, and I'll provide the structures, and then of course the corresponding Kovats retention index. So if the prefix, um, is meth, for example, this is methane. So I'll just do the, uh, well, we'll leave it at simply prefix. The number of carbons is one. So I'll provide the alkane structure here, a simple hydrocarbon with no other functional groups. So the alkane methane would have structure CH4. And it's Kovats retention index is defined as 100 or 100 multiplied by number of carbons. If we increase that carbon count to two, the prefix becomes F. So this now has structure CH3 bound to CH3. Each carbon has four bonds and the Kovats retention index is 200. A three carbon chain has prefix prop and now I'll draw with line structures here, right? So this is a CH3 and a CH2 in the middle, and then another CH3 with an index of 300. Four carbon compounds, but, uh, for example, would have four carbons in a row, one, two, three, four, and that would have a Kovats index of 400. <laughs> Okay, these are a little harder to remember the first four, but after this, it sort of makes sense. Um, pent, right, is obviously five carbons long. So pentane has this structure and it has a Kovats index of 500. Hexane is six carbons long, one, two, three, four, five, six, and has a Kovats index of 600. Um, there are four more you should be responsible for knowing. Heptane, seven carbons long. And that's Kovat index is 700. Octane, which is eight carbons long. Nonane, nine carbon hydrocarbon 
And then finally, decane, which is a 10 carbon hydrocarbon with an index of 1000. So these Kovats index values are independent of stationary phase for simple linear straight chain hydrocarbons. Doesn't matter what the stationary phase is, this is a defined value. So we're going to go on to do some problem solving uh, with the Kovats retention index. So when you're doing calculations uh, in gas chromatography, trying to find the Kovats index uh, for an unknown hydrocarbon or some other organic compounds, uh, you're going to use the following equation, where I, once again, is the Kovats retention index. Okay, it's a unitless value. And then um, lowercase n in this formula is going to be the number of carbons in the smaller hydrocarbon chain. And that number of carbons um, is going to be a known value. Um, so for example, you'll be given the name and from the name, you can use the prefix to determine how many carbons there are. Um, we'll need the data from one other hydrocarbon as well to be able to find the uh, unknown. So capital N is the number of carbons in the larger hydrocarbon. And then TR prime, right, this is the retention time minus the mobile phase time. Um, or in other words, the stationary phase time. So let's apply this equation with um, the data given below. You're given retention times for methane of 0.5 minutes and octane along with some unknown, and then we have nonane. So methane, of course, is the smallest hydrocarbon. Um, its retention time being 0.5 minutes tells us something about uh, the mobile phase time, because this should certainly have the lowest boiling point really of any compound in this separation because of its low molecular weight as weak LDFs. So that tells me that this is basically a TM or methane is going to be unretained, right? It's a gas at room temperature. Um, and then we have octane, which is an eight carbon hydrocarbon, C8H18. And it has a retention time of 14.3 minutes. Then you have some unknown that is 15.7 minutes and it comes out after octane but before nonane. So nonane is one carbon longer than octane and that retention time is 15.7 minutes. So we wanna figure out what's the retention index, right, for some unknown that has this intermediate time of 15.7 minutes. Excuse me, the nonane is 18.5. It's more strongly retained. So remember the index um, should be equal to 800 or eight times the number of carbons for straight chain alkane. And here it should be 900 for nonane. So it's likely that the unknown is gonna have some I value that is between 900 and 800, since it comes at a, at a retention time greater than the eight carbon alkane, but 
uh, lower than the nine carbon alkane. But we don't know what the structure of this is. It's an unknown molecule. So we can't simply use some rule and say that it's going to be 100 times the number of carbons in it, since we don't know the formula. Um, so we're going to use the equation above. And uh, notice that all of these uh, retention times here are adjusted, uh, or they are just the time spent in the stationary phase. And therefore, we need to calculate that time for every compound first. And TR for methane, because it's so low in boiling point or it's unretained, that's the TM value. So TR prime, we need to calculate this for octane. We'll do the same thing for the unknown and for nonane. And TR prime is simply the retention time minus the mobile phase time. Or I get 13.8 minutes for octane, 15.2 for the unknown, and then 18 minutes adjusted retention time for non -A. So octane was the one that had eight carbons, so the lower number of carbons. So recall that lowercase n refers to the lighter hydrocarbon. So this is TR prime for n, and then TR prime for the larger hydrocarbon, nonane, is capital N. Of course, this is TR prime for the unknown. So now all you have to do is plug in the formula. So the Kovacs retention index is equal to 100 multiplied by the smaller number of carbons in plus the difference of larger minus smaller, capital N minus lowercase n, all multiplied by the log of the retention time adjusted for the unknown minus the log of that adjusted retention time for the smaller number of carbon hydrocarbon divided by the log of the retention time of the larger hydrocarbon that's known minus the same term for the smaller hydrocarbon. All multiplied by 100 out front. Okay, so plugging into this equation now, we have 100 multiplied by 8 for octane plus 9 minus 8 for nonane minus octane multiplied by the log of the unknown, which is 15.2 minus the log of the octane, all divided by log of non-ane minus log of octane. Okay, so this is going to simplify a bit. We can now see that it's 100 multiplied by eight plus, this is just one here. So we can say log, and then when you subtract two logs, you can simply rewrite it as the division of the inside. So 15.2 over 13.8 divided by log of 18 over 13.8. And this should give us our final answer. So here I get Kovacs retention index is equal to 100 multiplied by 8 plus 0 0.042, all divided by
0.115. If you multiply that through, you get a re retention value of 837, which is exactly what we predicted or it falls within the range where I should be less than 900 because that was for non ane and it should be greater than 800 or octane. So using two different uh, retention times surrounding the peak that's unknown, you can find the exact retention uh, index for an unknown. So you can also be asked to uh, for example, solve for one of the retention times in this formula here, simply by being given the COVATS index. Okay, so that's another problem type that you should be comfortable uh, with completing. But once again, uh, this formula just tells us about um, the relative retention indices of hydrocarbons as a function of their molecular weight, right? The higher molecular weight compounds have higher indices of retention um, and therefore come out of the GC or elute at later times. So another question that you might be asked is much more conceptual. We won't do much calculation here, um, but now you're given five different compounds, a hydrocarbon benzene, and then uh, a four carbon alcohol butanol, five carbon ketone, pentanone, and then three carbon nitropropane, and then finally pyridine here. Okay. So you're given the COVATS retention indices. So these are all I values for a variety of stationary phase. Okay. So you don't have to know anything specific about any of these stationary phase values. You'd be given the table, um, but you could be asked to determine the COVATS retention index, I, for unknown compounds that are related somehow in structure to these. So let's consider um, the following compounds. So this is a ketone. And let's say that we want to figure out what its retention index is with stationary phase number five, which I've labeled above. Okay, so number five is this diphenyl 0.65, dimethyl 0.35, uh, polysiloxane. And this one is related to this structure, to pentanone most closely. And we have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. So the way that we would name this is starting at carbon one on the right, we would say it's two hexanone. So two pentanone has a retention index of 824. And the only modification that we've made is adding an extra CH2. We're adding a sixth carbon. So for two hexanone, it should be equal to 824 for the five carbon ketone plus 100, because we know that the COVATS retention index increases by 100 for every carbon that you add in a straight chain. So this should be 924 for two hexanone. We'll do another example. Could be asked to determine I for um, hexanol, one hexanol. So OL refers to an alcohol. Hex refers to six carbons. So this is a six carbon chain. There's an OH at carbon one. One, two, three, four, 
five, six. And let's say this question is asking us to determine I uh, with stationary phase number three. So stationary phase number three is this diphenyl dimethyl pyrosiloxane. And we see that butanol is the most similar structure. So butanol was four carbons long, and it has an index value of 717 for that stationary phase three. So because we now have gone from this four carbon alcohol to a six carbon alcohol, that means it's going to be 717 plus 200, because we're adding two carbons to that chain. So the index would be 917 for one hexanol on stationary phase three. So for more practice with gas chromatography and Kovats retention index, you can visit unit two of my analytical course guide at chemguides.com.